Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. And today I'm going to be talking about somewhat of a controversial topic. And that is, you know, are the new steering wheels, the direct drives, all these sorts of things, are they sort of getting towards a stage where it's almost pay to win? Um, and I guess, you know, this, this has been brought about by numerous conversations that I've had with people, um, my own experiences myself as well. And we're really going to get stuck into this, man. I, I did see also this on Twitter as well, um, which is sort of crazy that, you know, we're now getting to a stage where we're getting these advanced sort of pedals and stuff like that that's giving you like automatic launch control. And, you know, how, how can these things be manipulated into giving certain drivers an advantage? How can they be manipulated into a race situation? Um, all those sorts of things I want to get stuck into, man. And also as well there's like a recording of me just having a conversation with um like printer and some of my friends in discord where we're sort of going over you know talking about things our experiences printer now actually has the um csl dd with the eight newton meter pack um and of course printer was on the thrustmaster t300 so he literally has a direct comparison as he was hot lapping just a couple of days ago on the t300 and then has now switched to the CSL and you're going to get his perspective as well. Also, I'd like to mention right now also has been doing SRO where on the SRO events where you actually go on site and race against other people on LAN connection that they're all using the Fanatex. Um, I think it's either DD1s or DD2s and, you know, he's, he's had a lot, he's, you know, he's told me a lot about his experience with using those wheels compared to using the Frostmaster and it's pretty interesting reading if you're someone who's still on an older generation will um so yeah let's get let's get right stuck into the video and let's see what we can um see what we can figure out because for me it's definitely a a a bit of a, a bit of a sore topic so for me like the first thing I'd like to mention when it comes to steering wheels is um you know we've had I've had numerous experiences myself where you know when I'm when I'm watching people drive and I'm looking at their steering inputs, it's, it feels like it feels like I'm having to turn the car more than they're having to turn the car, which is one of the reasons why I've always felt the sort of the steering in the ATC is a little bit weird. Now in ATC in particular, I think as the games got older, as it's gone on, they've sort of you know they sort of taken away the sort of slip angle that you you was able to get away with. Now ACC, pretty much you can't really get away with sliding the car whatsoever because it's just, it just loses you time, okay? Earlier on in ACC, I felt like you could slide the car a little more and get away with it. But now definitely it's more in the realm of, you know, there's one good line and you need to focus on the exit. Make sure there's no sliding whatsoever. And that pretty much is the fastest way around the track. And... Obviously, it's going to be easier to achieve with a wheel that's more consistent. Everyone knows if you've got like a, a Frostmaster T300 or any type of Frostmaster, you tend to sort of lose force feedback the longer the race goes on. And you may not realize it, but it's going to make you slightly less accurate because the feeling is always going to be slightly different. Um, and for me, I feel like on games like, for instance, Project Cars, where the majority of us were on Frostmasters and Logitechs, it didn't matter so much that the game had a, a ridiculously, um, you know, a ridiculous amount of slip angle where you could pretty much drive the car sideways and it was still fast. But I believe on games as serious as ACC, iRacing, games like that, I, I don't think at this stage now you can compete um, with those sort those sorts of wheels and the technology that direct drive wheels have. Even if you look at the F1 games now that the, the bare standard to be at the top is all these guys have got dd wheels man you don't really see anyone on a um a lower budget wheel anymore because i, I just don't think i just don't think these wheels can hack it anymore man I, I think at the top level i believe there is a difference now a lot of people can say is it pay to win at the end of the day you kind of kind of get what you pay for in life in general you know you know you don't pay a thousand pound for a car and expect it to be an absolute monster you know what i mean so it kind of has got to that stage as well but at what stage does it get too much what stage is it like you know the person with the best will is gonna be like 
one of the fastest. If if you're competing against, you know, good drivers, um, even if we look at games like Call of Duty and stuff like that, now you've got sort of the scuff controllers and you've got the the you know the the one ping monitors and all these sorts of things that will give people an advantage. And of course, um, you know, if you've got the money, you're always going to want to have the best that you can have. But in terms of a competitive space, you know, is it fair that, you, you know, you can only sort of produce a certain level when you've got the equipment? You know, is, is, is in a way, is, is sim racing becoming a mirror image of real racing where it comes that it boils down a lot to the equipment that you have, man? And I feel like that we're starting to go in that direction, which in one instance is sad because... You, you never want to feel like you're disadvantaged just because of what wheel you've got, you know? As long as the wheel turns, as long as it's got force feedback, it, you know, you, you want it to be a level playing field. But I, I believe the more the games are becoming more simulated, the more we're going towards the, the equipment being just as important as the setup of your car. And it's going to be very interesting when, when I talk to Prentner because he's going to, you know... I'm going to basically play you guys the conversation that we were having in Discord and some of the points that he made as well is pretty interesting to see, you know, how a different will can affect the way how you drive, can affect the setups you can use. It's insane because, you know, from my understanding, having a different will, you're literally able to use setups that are more aggressive that you might, you might think would be a lot more difficult to drive, but... If you've got a good wheel, um, a good direct drive wheel, you're actually able to drive these setups without a problem. You don't even get the, the counter steering that you'd get on a Thrustmaster T300 because I feel with the T300, it has this sort of numbness sometimes in the middle of corners and on the exit of corners where you're, you know, you're putting your foot down trying to get the power out of the corner, but you, you kind of you have to react almost to visually what the car's doing instead of actually feeling it in the steering wheel and you know sometimes you may overturn and, and stuff like that and scrub the tires and you, you're not meaning to but you don't feel it necessarily through the wheel so you can only really react of what your eyes are seeing which is one of the main reasons why i feel like consistency wise that's one of the main differences between um like a dd wheel and just a a bog standard old school belt driven or a motored wheel but I'm gonna I'm gonna play you guys some of the conversation that we had, and tell me what you think in the comment section below. Mm. Bro, so no word of a lie, I literally just set up about how long ago, babe? About what? Twenty minutes ago. Twenty minutes ago, bro. Yeah. Mm. And bearing in mind, yeah, it takes like what, you know, at least a good half a day to get you know get, up to get speed used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get used to it, bro, yeah. But I've literally just done four laps, fifty six nine. You know what I'm saying? And even though it's not as fast, yeah, mm. but it's just the reference point. And for me to get into that sort of, that time scale there, it takes quite a bit of time. What, what was your fastest lap with the T300? <clears throat> a 56.6. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? And mm. then obviously, even with, even with a bit more time, you know, it's... It's <laughs> funny, because I remember, I remember when, um, I remember before, before uh, Leon Seeley got his um, Moser wheel, he did that. Um, yeah, I think he 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 got to go to Paul Ricard as well, wasn't it? And he said he ended up setting his PB while he was there on on the Fanatec wheels and that. You know what I mean? So how you go somewhere on a wheel that you're not used to in a setup that you're not used to, and you're able to set a PB instantly, bro. Instantly. I'm telling you, it's it's. And I was just saying, I was just saying to um, to Mrs. Earl, I was just like, this is a joke. It's not even yeah, fair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm I haven't even got the top of the range sort of DD. Yeah, I've yeah, only yeah. got this CSL DD. You know what I'm saying? And because, like, each, do you remember, I always go back to, yeah? Remember that time we had that race, that endurance race, me, you, and Dowking, yeah? Like, when we were practicing on our own in the same car, we were all within a couple of attempts. And then the moment we all had to go on the same setup, we were nowhere compared to Dowking. Nowhere. Yeah. Look, like, he was, I remember, I think he even double stinted the tyres, fam. And even after, on the second stint, after not changing the tires after an hour and more, he was still quicker than we was going when we had fresh tires. You know what I mean? It's like, how 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 is that possible? That's when I knew, like, nah, something's up. 
Because I could not turn that car at all. I tell you what it is, yeah. It's the wheel spin. You don't get that much wheel spin. And you can feel when the wheels are going to spin. Okay. And it's a lot of it's through my corner. Mm. My corner for me. And I just feel like, you know, there's a lot more grip. Um overall, bro. It's it's mm. It's genuinely a joke, bro. I've literally only done four laps, and you can check my screen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. You know, what, you, know what, you know what I find crazy? Because I this this is the way how I think here. Yeah. I think like, um, if you're in a hot lap and you're time trialing or whatever, I think at the highest levels of grip, then you can take a, a crappy wheel like a T three hundred and do good times in it. But I mm. think the moment you start getting into like like slippery situations or when you're doing races the opening laps when your tires not up to the right temperature or when it starts raining that's when i feel like you've got the biggest difference in it that's when i feel like those wheels are going to have an even greater um advantage in it because if do you remember times we used to watch people driving it's like, like how did he catch that bro like how did he get that sideways and catch it because you know on a t300 the moment you get sideways you catch it one way you get thrown the other and it? it's yeah. simple you're not catching those kind of slides in it so for me, anytime I see that like low grip situations, that's where I feel like the bigger advantage comes in it, like in races and stuff like that. Like yeah, if, you, if you're talking about idea. perfect grip, you can get away with a little bit more on on a crappy wheel, isn't it? When the grip's absolutely perfect in time trial, but nine nine times out of ten, we're not in perfect grip. You know what I mean? So that's the thing, bro. Literally, I I can't, I really can't explain it to you, bro. But like the 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 whole feeling. Like, as soon as you get on one, yeah, you just, mm. like, cornering just becomes 10 times easier. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... You remember what you were saying about um when you did the, the Barcelona race, isn't it? Oh, yeah, even when I did the Barcelona race. See, it's not just the fact of where you get a DD, yeah, and you just plug in and you go. It's more or less just sort of, like, you're changing the settings. And, obviously, I'm using the similar sort of settings that I used in um, Barcelona. Mm. And when I used those settings, I instantly felt the difference yeah, yeah. compared to compared to what I was doing in Monza and Paul Ricard, for example, because obviously I didn't have like certain settings yeah, on yeah, the yeah. tuning menu on the Fanatec app and stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, and you, you got to sort of look at it as well as, you know, like the, the Fanatec yeah, isn't even the best rig out there, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? There's other ones that are even better and have better force feedback, you know mm. what I'm saying? Than the one that I have, but it's just, it's like, bro, it, it was literally. I was just driving it for a couple of minutes, bro, and I thought, you know, this is this is. So, have you noticed anything in terms of like how much you have to turn the wheel or, or anything <laughs> like that? When it's hard to explain, bro. It's it's like you can catch a slide a lot more easier. Yeah, a lot more easier than what I could do the T three hundred. Sometimes you know that point where you could feel the front tires losing grip. Yeah. But when you try to catch it on the T three hundred, yeah, you're scrubbing way too much. Yeah, you can scrub the tires and lose speed. You can scrub exactly, but with this, yeah, you can just you can feel it slightly scrubbing, and you can sort of use that to inspire, use it to like your advantage in a way. And it's it's hard to explain. It's not until you actually have one and yeah, you, have the same. Like you know, like is it like you know when to correct your steering angle because you can feel yeah. the scrubbing? Yeah. The thing is, you can't you can't feel when to correct your steering angle on a T300. You can't yeah, do it. Yeah, you can't. You have to do it kind of by sound, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. by sound. It's just, <clears throat> it's, bro, it's, it's definitely, well, like I said, I've already done four laps. And yeah. I'm, I'm already in 56s, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And ideally, yeah, in, in and I, I'd expect that from like, because obviously when I got new pedals, it took me, well, at least like half a day to sort of get up to speed and stuff. Yeah, it. yeah. And you, you gotta get like the perfect settings, like four perfect settings setting. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I literally just mimicked the settings that I used at Barcelona, and bro, it's it's made like. So so what 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 DD wheel you got now? Is it CSL? Uh, I've got the CSL DD with the booster oh. pack. Oh, so you got so, the booster pack. So up to eight. Yeah. Newton up meters. to eight newton meters. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting to see the difference because now you can. You've got a direct comparison to literally what you was doing a, a, a day ago. Oh yeah, easy. I mean, yeah, like yeah. I said, if I spent that much time, mm. as what I did yesterday, I'd definitely be going quicker. Definitely going quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it comes it's, easy like that, four laps and 
Yeah, four laps. Bro, I'm, you can see it, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Just four laps and just instant. And I'm even looking at my middle sector thinking to get into point eight or point seven, yeah, it takes a bit of grinding or a bit of yeah, like yeah. precision. It's that's what that, I guess that's what it is, bro. I think mm. you have to be less precise with these kinds of things. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm. Even though precision is key, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm not saying that you, you can throw the wheel about and it sort of turns and whatnot for you, yeah. But on the T three hundred, yeah, you have to be really, really precise. Yeah, you have to you know when you when you bang out a, a a great lap on a T three hundred, you really felt like you had done something. Done something. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> you really feel like you did something. Like, like to like today, bro. I was banging out almost the perfect laps for myself in Kota until I got to Quali and I messed it all up. Pretty much only because there was someone in front of me on on my on the lap where I was on the my best lap. There was someone right in front of me. I caught him in the last sector. And I made made mistakes sliding all over the place, but I nailed everything. Do you know what I mean? I pretty much nailed everything. I would have been like at least in the top ten, but yeah. it's so hard to do. You know what I mean? It's so hard to do. I can't. It's hard to just continuously be like really consistent on a T three hundred because you always get to that stage, especially in a race. You get to that stage where you start losing a bit of force feedback, and then the back end starts to be a little bit harder to to control because the wheel's just not as heavy as it was at the start, do you know what I mean? Yeah, All these yeah. sorts of things, man. The problem with the T300, yeah. you always going to have that yeah, yeah. issue. Yeah, definitely. Well, you said it, you said it with like, was it the Logitech even had like higher, was it Hertz, was it the frequency? Was Yeah, yeah, the Logitech's. I, I, like I say, remember on Project Cars? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get nowhere near as fast as I was on that fucking Logitech wheel, no, that felt shit. Yeah, mm, I tried everything. Because you said that the Logitech wheel was like it was like more reactive, innit? Yeah. I remember, yeah, remember, well, um, um, what's his name? Remember, Van, remember how fast Van Omen was on the Logitech wheel? Even Amir Hassini, he yeah, was on the yeah. old Logitech. Remember how fast he was? And pro- yeah. he's, not, I swear, he's got a DD now. He's not even as quick. <laughs> I don't even know if he's still. It I don't even know if he uses crack. DD. It felt crap compared to. I just think injured, but the lap times was just well quicker in it. It yeah, felt like the car turned quicker in it. Yeah, you yeah. could get the back end to turn around quicker in it with the because it's got faster reactions. It turned it turned the car better off. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so do you think, yeah? Because obviously, I saw that I saw that thing on Twitter with um with them pedals that give you like um what was it? Give you a what's the word um like a boost when you start in it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, like, are we gonna get to a stage where the equipment's gonna become the difference in who's the fastest that's or not? Yeah, oh, you know what I mean? that, 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 that stuff, balls, you know what I mean? Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, can you have a launch control? What makes you think it's like, yeah, that's it, launch control. The pedals yeah. have launch control, like, you know I mean, now, that's insane. You know what I mean. But what's it like? What sort of launch control is it? Just like us keeping a certain rev, and that's why it'll be in it. Something like that. But you, like, if there's ways to manipulate that, imagine like you can just put your your TC to zero. You know what I mean? Yeah, it probably yeah, well, it probably is. Just to set your revs. So when yeah, you yeah. put your foot down, it just keeps it that rev in it for your for your, your thing. But as well as if you got good pedals, you can do that anyway, innit? Yeah, um, yeah. But it just makes it a bit easy, innit? Mm. Probably just. Press a button, but you, you don't. We don't want to get to a point where like AI is being part of, like being mixed with drivers' ability. Because when it starts getting there, like it's like, bro, there's gonna be no, no skill involved. Almost, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're gonna see like, Brendan, what should you do? Because you you getting that WRC tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, to be honest, oh, well, I've got. Fo- I'm I'm sort of like focusing on. Oh yeah, the hot lapping thing. thing. The hot lapping thing. Now yeah, that yeah, I've yeah. got the new wheel and that, and that, you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna see what yeah. I can maximize with it mm. as well. To go back over the tracks that you've already done and see, because obviously you yeah, know that's, your that's, that's why that's why I done Silverstone. Yeah. And like I said, bro, four laps it took me to get into 56, mm. and even then it was a shit lap. <laughs> yeah. It was shit. I'm breaking early in certain in certain corners. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm just like. Yeah, still getting used to I'm the wheel still, and still getting used to it, but like the fact that I know that going through certain sections, like for example, uh what corner is it? Got turn one, turn two, after Maggots and Beckett's, and yeah. then you know after Hamilton straight, you got that long right hander that, that bro, that there, yeah, mm. 
you know, sometimes in the T three hundred, yeah, you have to correct quite a bit. Yeah, with yeah, that yeah. Long right hand and stop, stops it. like stopping the the slide. Stopping the slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get that. <laughs> you do not get that. You know what I'm saying? You get a bit of it, yeah, and then you can control the slide and you're Mm. gaining, bro, free time. And especially through that next section as well, yeah, the the chicane. Coming out of that chicane, yeah, sometimes you get a bit of rule spin on the exit. Yeah. And uh, on the T300, yeah, if you're correcting it too much, that's all time losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's covering the tyres, isn't it? I think, I think, I think ACC brings out the worst in having the T300 because in ACC, the slip angle is really non-existent you can't slide on this game it's time every like every little slide every little correction on acc is just time man. You know what i mean it. another games other like shitty games project cars and that you can get away with sliding all over the place it was fast so it didn't it didn't really matter but on games like acc it, it definitely matters man then even even today in my race a couple of corners where you just get a little bit of slide you make a small correction you just see the time go down instantly you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It's a joke, bro. I, and like I said, it, I said it's not fair. <laughs> I said it's not fair. <laughs> I was saying to the missus, I said, I've been struggling for years. For years with this. Years with this. And now I can just literally hmm. pinpoint corners a lot more easier. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, and just... Even if, you, even if you look at it, yeah, like, no... Or realistic. If we look at, like, when we first started playing this game and pretty much everyone was on a Frostmaster... Even if it wasn't a T three hundred, it was some other Frostmaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like and look how close the pace was between everybody. And then once you know some of the other guys started upgrading and stuff, their pace just went like Instant. instantly. Like after a couple of months, it's like how would this guy get so quick? Do you know what I mean? I remember, I remember like guys like Barry. I don't even know what Will Barry has got, but I'm sure he upgraded. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Barry, Fox, Jardine, all these guys are going now. way quicker. Yeah, or yeah. CSL or something like that. I'm not too sure. Yeah, 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 for but sure. Even then, it's just like, I mean, like, even if you look at the the base level of the fastest guy on the game at the time was like what Noble. You know what I mean? Noble was the benchmark for time. You know what I mean? Then all these guys came in and they all had like DD wheels and all that stuff off the back. All of a sudden, gone. You know what I mean? Look at guys like Statsenko. Statsenko was a normal guy. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, not, not he was fast, but he wasn't like crazy. All of a sudden, wow! Yeah, I mean, joke. insane, crazy man. But yeah, I, give me, give me, give me at least like a week or so in it. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, sure. See what I can do with it. You know, but, it's gonna be interesting, like on WRC as well. Like, I haven't tried. Yeah. I, but I don't think I'll. I, well, I'm, I'm planning on getting it. Yeah, but I mm. won't get it as soon as possible. I'm just, I'm just gonna. Yeah, focus just, on. Um, Getting yeah, the best out of the wheel, isn't it? You, uh, yeah. Giving Carl a head start on that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still confident, Marley? Nah, yeah, over there. Yeah. But yeah, man, de- definitely. Um, I, I, you know, I knew there was like even remember we used to watch people like bro, they're not not really having to turn the wheel the way we turn the wheel. Yeah, it's I mean, I see, yeah, I used to see all that stuff, and you know, like. To me, it all goes back down to that race we did with Dowking for me. That was the first time I said, nah, something is up, bro. Yeah. Something's up big time. Huh? Um, that was what, the, that's, that's, that's the difference. And I, and I noticed, was it Laguna Seca, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was in the M6, bro. I will never yeah, forget yeah. that race because individually, so individually, when we practice, bro, we were within like a couple of attempts, all of us, all three of us. The whole time. And then when we settled on the setup, bro, we were like nine tenths a lap slower. And it's like, bro, like I generally, I can't turn the car. You know what I mean? Like I, I cannot turn this car. I don't know how he's going that quick. I'm watching it thinking, what is going on? <laughs> is it me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Am I just shit? <laughs> no, bro. It was, that was insane, man. And after that, it was kind of like, nah, son, these, these wheels, they're not, they're not cutting it anymore, man. There was there was a stage where the T three hundred was the was was the will to have, but it's over with, bro. Sorry, it's, it's over. It's yeah. done. Hundred and ten percent. Well, man, it is what it is, man. It's what it is. At least you're there now, so you know, yeah. get the benefits of having the will, you know. Yeah. 
So there you go, guys. That was our conversation. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, if you any of you guys have got a DD wheel and upgraded, tell me the differences that you find between the two different wheels and how it's helped you progress or, you know, what you like so much about having a DD wheel compared to an older wheel. Um, leave all that good stuff in the comment section below. It's Cryptic TNG. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.